Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Jay, and today I'm on break with... Oh, John Hollis. I didn't know <laughs> <laughs> John, thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for coming on the channel. You're welcome. Uh, I, I saw your, your channel and I saw a few of the videos. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. And, um, you know, I, I know all the people that were on there before and I know you. And I thought, oh, this is kind of a fun way to, to kind of reminisce and, and connect when we, you know, especially now when we can't really connect and, uh, you know, talk about old times. So I thought it's kind of a cool thing to do. I had a lot of requests to have you on onto the channel. What a lot of people don't know was that when we came out with craps in it was around 2000 when the game first broke in in the city you came in right after and you basically changed the way that the game was viewed from a lot of the players and a lot of the staff um all the co-workers and whatnot so you have a really really big thumbprint on like craps in in edmonton and alberta for that part so yeah it was i i'd never i mean i'd worked in a lot of casinos i mean I've been out of the casinos for a while now, 15 years, but I was in them for, for 19. And, um, you know, I dealt crafts for 18 of those 19 years, but I'd never worked anywhere in any casino, which was like that new and that fresh. And it was really kind of cool and um, a really new experience for me where like almost 100% of the dealers were like brand new. So it, it was really kind of cool and it was, I, I really enjoyed it and it was, it was a great way, like myself and, and you know Darren Evans, who was another person who was there who had a lot of experience. Like him and I probably had most more experience than anybody else to kind of like share what we'd learned and kind of like best practices that we've seen from we'd learned over the years, right? So it, it was actually a really cool experience and how um, really eager that the other dealers were. So it, it was it was a cool experience. I enjoyed it. So John, what was it that brought you into the casino industry and uh, made you become a dealer? Well. When I was 17, so that's a really long time ago. So that was, uh, uh, I'm 52 now, so I'm old. <laughs> so when I was 17, I was kind of bummed around back home and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, and I, I have a brother, he's seven years older than me, and he took a, a gap year before going to university. And he went to work in the casino in, in Cardiff, where, where I'm from. And so I was coming up to my, you know, I was 17, almost 18. And my brother said, well, why don't you go and work in a casino? until you figured out what you want to do. And he said, you know what, this, the pay's pretty good. There's lots of parties, there's lots of girls, you'll have a great time. I was like, yeah, sounds like fun. I'll go and try it till I figure it out. So um, so I, an, inter um, an interview, like a kind of an ad came up for a, there was a job posting, so I went there. And uh, so I'm having the interview, it's all really great. And the guy turns around to me and he said, actually, how old are you? And I was like, I'm 17. And he's like, well, you have to be 18 to work in a casino. I said, well, I turned 18 in like, I think it was like six weeks. So he's like, oh, okay. Uh, the, he said, as long as you turn 18 when you go on the floor, it's all good. So I was like, all right then. So he said, well, I'll let you know in, in a week um, whether or not you've been employed, right? So I was like, okay. And it was funny because at the time, I, was, I applied for a job as a kitchen porter in a restaurant. And I went for two interviews. So right at the same time, I was waiting for a job. Either I was going to work in a, as a kitchen porter in a hotel or a casino, and I didn't get the kitchen porter job, but I got the job with a casino. <laughs> so, yeah, so, that, that, so, yeah, so that's how I ended up in the casino. And I turned, uh, the training was about um, six to eight weeks. It used to take about six to eight weeks to get your gaming license in Britain back then. This was like 1986. And um, so basically the training was as long as it took until your license came in. So, you know, myself there was about seven or eight of us and it was it was, it was a privately owned casino and it's really weird because they were training for one game so they go okay we need roulette and at the time they only had three games anyway so they had roulette blackjack and craps so they needed roulette dealers and they go okay well we hire all these roulette dealers so i just learned roulette so i went there learned roulette and they were brutal they were so taskmasters they would like shout at you and scream at you yeah so and then i turned 18 during the training and so that's how I kind of got into the into the business. How did your career path kind of move on from that higher? So, like I said, I mean, the casino I worked in, they only trained me for one game. 
And it was really kind of like, you know, back then it was um, probably on casino. And they would ask you if you wanted to learn crafts, right? They'd go, okay, you know, they would pick the dealers out. And it was maybe once a year they would train people. And then they, they only had like eight dealers. So for me, it was like the only, I didn't want to learn blackjack. I was like, oh, blackjack was boring. And roulette was really busy and it's a really popular game in the UK. And I was like, well, the last two times they've asked for craft dealers. And it was kind of a big prestige thing to be asked. They looked over me and my friends, Paul, who... Um, we trained at the same time so we were like you know what I, I'm done with this now I'm, I'm kind of bored now we've been here for a year let's try and do something else so um, in Britain at the time there used to be agencies they probably still are right and basically what they are is you'd phone them up and you'd say hey what jobs you got and you go okay we got jobs on the ship we got jobs in Poland we got jobs here jobs there, blah, blah. And, and so you go okay I'll send me up for an interview and I'll go up there do a table test and then go, go whatever right so I was on a lot of these these agencies, and most of the time then, you needed at least two years' experience anyway, right? So we're like, okay, we'll do this. Maybe this is something we can do to travel, like Paul and I and, and a few others. So like, okay, so we learned crafts, and then I got a, a, a job interview. We were actually going to work, I don't know if you know what a kibbutz is. A kibbutz is kind of like, they used, to, they used to do them a lot way back when. And basically, it's you go and work in Israel, and it's kind of like on a, on a, like a hostel thing, and they'll work you in a farm, or the factory, and you just they'll put you up in a hostel, and it'd be like food and accommodation, and it's just a one way to a way to kind of like bum around Israel and just travel, right? So me and my friend Paul were like, you know, we were about nineteen, coming at the around about nineteen at the time, and we're like, should we just do this? We're bored of doing this now. I, you know, they're not going to teach us crap, so let's just leave, right? So we were in the process to save up just to go and bum around Israel for a for a couple of months and have a laugh, and then they turned around and they said, look, um, John, do you want to learn craps? And Paul, do you want to learn craps? So we're like. All right, sure, we'll do this, and we'll, we'll carry on doing this for a laugh, see how it goes. So we end up staying for another um, couple of years, like two more years in the casino. Um, then I ended up going to Israel, and I accidentally ended up working for an illegal organized crime family in Israel. It was really strange. On a daily ship, it was crazy. So we went through a legitimate agency, but we ended up working for the biggest organized crime family in Israel. So that was bizarre. Um, so I went to Israel. Um, I worked in about eight different casinos around Britain. So I worked in London. Um, I worked in Cardiff, where I'm from, at Bristol. And to be honest, I was like, because at the time I didn't have any commitments. So I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of bored here. Uh, I'll go there. So I just used to travel places, right? I go, oh, I'll go and work there. Like I worked in Israel. I worked in Greece. Um, I worked in, like I said, uh, ships for like six years on and off. And um, yeah, so. And then I came to Canada for five years, you know, I was in casino, casino, Canadian, Canadian casinos for five years. Okay, next question from one of your fans. John, the legend, mate, listen, I got to know if it's true or not. Did you actually choke somebody out with a crap stick once? Thanks. <laughs> That's true. Um, <laughs> this was back in Cardiff. So the, back then... Um, dealers, we never accepted tips, so we didn't we didn't care about tips. We didn't care about really the service you gave to somebody. It was like, eh, whatever. And uh, there was this guy. He's, he's probably he's passed away now because it's you know, thirty five years ago. So anyway, this guy named was Charlie, and he was really small, right? And he used to stand right next to the stick, and he used to like seeing the dice land. So one afternoon, so we go in it, and there's no one playing. It's just Charlie, and we're like, oh man, I don't want to deal with this guy. He wasn't a big player. He was just annoying. So anyway, so I come on the stick, and um, he stands right next to me, and he's throwing a dice, and for a laugh, I'm like, I'm just kept leaning in front of him, and he, so he couldn't see the dice land, and he was getting madder and madder, and he was like, stop doing that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, just throw the dice, Charlie. So then he kept doing it, and I, I was just getting more and more madder and angrier and angrier, until eventually he turned around, and he went, and he slapped me right across the face, and I just lost it. So I got the stick, and I turned around, and you know where the hook, the bend? I caught him there. And I'm pushing it down, and I just lost it by this point. I'm like 20 and crazy. So I'm pushing it down, and he's trying to get it out and pull it, and I'm pushing it. And all I kept shouting at him, I'm like, don't you effing ever touch me again, or I'll effing kill you. I'll rip your head off, and I'm going crazy. <laughs> and my friend who was sitting boxing, he was so mellow. He sat there, and he, all he kept saying was, John, take the stick out of Charlie's neck. And I, and I was like, oh, it's getting really bad, man. Pushing down again. Anyway, so... The next dealer comes up, and I'm still ragging on Charlie. And he's still kind of going. I'm shouting and screaming at him. And then, so the dealer come up and he taps me on this, on the, you know, on, on the back, and he's like, "John, uh, 
So I went to walk around to deal with, deal to him. And uh, my friend Mark, he's like, nah, John, go and take a break. So I come off the table. I'm like, pretty sure I'm going to get fired now, but I may as well give my side of the story. So anyway, I go up to the pit manager and I told him what happened. And he's like, you know what? Don't worry. I think Charlie's drunk. He probably forget about it. So that was it. Nothing happened. It was a crazy place, man. Some, like, some of the stories there, it was out of, off the hook. I mean, you know, so I went on break, come back upstairs, and we went up there. And it was really weird because from that moment on, you know, like on regular t- craft tables, you're like, okay, this is for Bill, this, and you name them all, right? You name all the players. And this, this was the only craft table for like 200 kilometers, right? So anyway, we stopped using his name. It was so weird. We were like, yeah, next to you, on the bend, back wall. And he kept saying, for Charlie. But Charlie, I mean, what he used his name, and he got so mad. Eventually, he complained. He complained to the manager about us not calling him by his name. Not that I tried to rip his head up with a stick. <laughs> oh my god, it was such a crazy place. Was there actually a place that you worked at that had a cage around you when you were that on was the it. stick? That was it. That was it. Okay. Yeah. If tell you what, because. It was the only place I ever worked, which it was so busy, right? Because like I said, we was the only table for like 200 kilometers, right? So if you wanted to play craps, you had to come here. And we had a cage around us. And uh, we would get so mad if anybody leant on it or put a drink on it. You'd be like, oh, get off, get off. You know? But yeah, it was just kind of like, otherwise you just get swamped with people. It was crazy busy. Oh, wow. Wow, that's so cool. Did you have any, any mentors like in your development or was it just like a little bit of everybody that kind of made you grow into the dealer that you were? Well, so when I learned craps, we had, um, like I said, the craps team I went to, they were brutal. They were absolutely brutal. They, they literally taught by humiliation. So, <laughs> but it, it was, it was crazy. They were like, yeah, you mess up. We're going to make your life hell. So anyway, so, my craps training was one hour a day before work for five days. Then I went on a live game. I basically knew how to play. And it was, a, like I said, it was a busy game. And uh, so I went there and I remember the first night we go in and we see your names are, right? And this guy, uh, Kevin, who taught us, he was, he was so, he, yeah, he wasn't a very nice guy. And anyway, he was a bit of a jerk. Anyway, so I go into work and it's like, oh, my name's on, a, on the craps table. And I was just, oh, cold sweat. I was just panicking. I was like, oh my God, this is it. And I remember we used to we, like, we had to go up two flights of stairs to go up to the, the floor, right? The gaming floor. And then we turned right and there was a craps table. I remember turning right and I couldn't see the table. There was that many people around it. I couldn't see it. And then the boxman stood up as I'm getting closer. And he's like, get on a stick. And I was like, oh, I'm so nervous. Anyway, so I get on a stick. And for whatever reason, I have no idea why, they, they would always say to you, you've got to be loud because it's, it's a crazy table. Everyone's shouting and screaming. Whatever you do, we don't care about the calls. Just call the right number and be loud. So I got into this weird habit of going, <clears throat> cleaning my throat before every call. And my friend, like, these are all my friends. I've worked with them for a year. These are all these dealers and boxmen. I used to go out party. And they were like, what? And so they ripped into me. Like, why did you keep going? <clears throat> before every call. And I couldn't stop. I was like, oh. And it was just, even the players were like, why is he doing that? But I was so nervous. I was terrified. But then, <laughs> so I get on in. I was dealing. I was like, oh, my God, I'm sweating. I'm <clears throat> making this weird noise. It was crazy. But what they would do is, so they turned around, like, and, and if you were dealing, and if you left the puck on, like I said, this was a busy game. There was this one guy, his name was Eddie, he was a boxman. He would then, if you left the puck on when on a winner, and, you know, and they paid a lot, and you were standing there, waiting, Uh-oh. I remember you standing like that. He would get your puck, he would throw it through your, your chips, and then throw two sacks of each color onto the layout while you, so you're like, oh my God. So, yeah, they basically taught you by humiliation. It was crazy. And then afterwards, they're like, hey, let's go for the gym. And then you go for the gym. So, but, but they were really strict. Even on roulette, they were really super strict on like how you dealt. And, and you know, so that really gave me like the fundamentals, the chip handling skills that kind of got me like, better, right? And it was, the game was super fast. I mean, they knew everybody. And they, like the fundamentals of the game, that how I dealt and how you saw me deal mm-hmm. was from how I was trained in Cardiff, like, you know, 30 years ago, right? Yeah. And it's weird. I mean, I remember I went to work in Greece and I was sit, I was a boxman in Greece. And the pit manager there I'd worked with as a crap stealer in uh, in Cardiff. And he turned around and he walked up to me and I, I didn't even know he was there. And he walked up and I was dealing because one end opened and I was dealing. And he went, man, I recognize a crap stealer from Cardiff anywhere. It was just, they, it was like a little factory. They churned out. They were so rude, like rigid and oh, this way, this way. But they were very good. Like the fundamentals, they just drummed into you. And he goes... All you guys deal exactly the same. 
It was crazy. And, I, and that's how they did. You'd like, you, it was like, like an iron fist. They ruled that table, right? And, but you had to deal that. And the players liked it. And in the end, we were like, yeah, okay, we'll do it. This is the way it's done. Right? And that's kind of how I showed and dealt the game everywhere else and, and when I was in the uh, Palace too. Nice.